Attention! Although my content is usually family-friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Justice for All is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system, and as such, the videos in this Let's Play may contain blood, mild violence, and or suggestive themes. So, viewer discretion is advised. If I had a nickel for every time I made theories in this game, I think I could probably buy at least two candy bars. That was hey your guys, opening! Welcome okay. back to Phoenix Wright! Ace Attorney Justice for All, because last time Artie screwed up his opening, he fell, and so he decided I should do it. Not bad. Better than my last one. But again, the bar was, like, below Here the ground. Here we go! <laughs> last I, I hit the ground, but at least I wasn't below the ground. Yes. So, we <laughs> might actually finish it up this episode. I'm not sure. If we Pretty do, sweet. it'll be a long oh, episode. <laughs> All right, so we're on Adrian's testimony where she's like, yeah, I was protecting Matt the whole time, even though she was testifying against mm, him. Yeah. Yeah. So she had a feeling Plus. Matt was the murderer. Would you say that was your intuition speaking to you? Don't confuse my methods of reasoning with your own. <clears throat> if you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three things? A motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. And if you think these three things through, the answer becomes quite clear. You should have already known that, Phoenix. They didn't teach that to us in school, at least not from what I remember. May I continue now? Okay, it looked like the page she was turning was super thick. I don't know. <laughs> there are pages like that. <laughs> Matt had to kill Juan no matter what, really. So would you say this need came from the press conference? Yes. Do you know why Juan chose that event and the hotel for the conference? Because that was when he could cause the most damage to the public's beloved Matt Engard. And you knew of this plan, didn't you, Miss Andrews? Yes, because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. But I'm sure Mr. Engard himself didn't know anything about a press conference. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know about the press conference? He said so! Can you show me proof he did? <laughs> uh, anyway, the important thing here is that this information was not in your testimony. Yes, I agree. Miss Andrews, please correct your testimony, if you please. Grasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Gray? I know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. Has Mr. Ongar done something to hurt or betray you personally? Why do you ask? You were the one who helped Mr. Corrida with his press conference. And that event was supposed to bring down Mr. Ongard, yet you still helped out! The person on trial right now is Mr. Ongard, right? What the witness was thinking, helping the victim with his plan, is none of our concern. In any case, this means that the defendant had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this to myself? He didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. Really? Well, about... But, but didn't you already testify earlier that Mr. Ongard was taking a nap in his room? Are you telling me now that that too was a lie so you could cover for Mr. Ongard? I'm not telling you anything of the sort. When I went to get him from the show, he honestly was sleeping. However, as to whether he was sleeping the entire time, that I cannot say. I was too busy setting up the stage at the time. Hmm. I keep trying, but I can find no flaws with what Mr. Andrews has said. Did I say Mr.? Or Miss Andrews? I don't remember. Miss Andrews, I'll say it now. I can't say the same for some people here in this courtroom, however. The judge is glaring straight at Mia. He's glaring at you, smart guy. Thought she was going to use a less kind word as that last, <laughs> last yeah. word. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so too, but it's funny. Two pieces of evidence, the button and the knife. You could hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be a clever camouflage. Then, what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and the mar murderer fought. And during the fight, the killer ripped the button from the Jammin' Ninja's costume. You're talking about this button, correct? That button was found in the pleats of Matt's comma, isn't that correct? I would think that it makes a very decisive evidence. Ugh. Looks like you were outfoxed again, Mr. Wright. 
Anyway, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept defeat. Thank goodness Mia can still look at me. With an icy stare, yes. Miss Andrews, for Mr. Wright's sake, please add this information to your testimony. It's just getting longer and longer. The button was torn off of Juan during his fight with Matt. Oh, that's probably what we're gonna have to present on. And how do you know that? When the ends of the threads on the button and the costume were matched up, they were found to fit together perfectly, or so I heard. That doesn't prove, though, that he fought with Matt. Right. Hmm, I've heard that before, too. But why would Miss Andrews know about this case down to such a fine detail? Don't look at me like that. Just because I'm prepared and you're not. Ah! I thought I had her this time for sure. If there's anything to trip her up on, it has to be here. But where and what? But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt I had to protect him. But what you really did was stab the guy in the back, didn't you? And at the worst possible time. Who's to say she really stabbed the guy in the back, as you put it? This witness could have disclosed things about Mr. Augard at any time. Why, then, would she wait until the shoot there was a large audience before doing so? It's the same reason why Mr. Corita planned such an elaborate conference. Miss Andrews wanted to cause Mr. Augard as much damage as she possibly could. This witness bears ill will towards the defendant. This isn't the Phoenix Wright Wax Philosophical Power Hour. And please stop slandering the witness. I would watch that show, by the way. <laughs> As I expected, Miss Andrews' testimony seems pretty solid. Really? Because to me it sounds a little wishy-washy. Wishy-washy? Well, I guess we'll see if I press a little more. You should know this by now. You need strong, decisive evidence to make her talk. Got it, Chief. I'm going to pin you down this time, Miss Andrews. Meanwhile, Miss Von Karma is in the hospital. <laughs> oh yeah, forgot about her. <laughs> so you think this is the one? I think so, because it could have been torn off at another time. Well, it's covered in blood. Yeah. The victim's blood. So yeah, what could have happened is Miss Andrews could have walked in and just been like, oh, alright. <laughs> Put it somewhere, hold it, who cares, and then throw it in his costume and be like, oh! That doesn't... That's not proof, though, that that actually happened. That's just a possibility. You're kind of on the right track, though, so think... This is something that has actually been a contradiction the whole time. Think about what we know how the murder happened. So the murderer and Juan fought for a bit, knocked right. the cosmetics off the table. And suffocated. He suffocated. Then, and then they, was stabbed. And then was stabbed with the knife afterwards. It's just weird. So the question is, when did the button get ripped off? After the blood, of course. After he was stabbed. But that doesn't make yeah, but that doesn't make sense because if if it was torn off during the struggle, he wouldn't be bleeding at that point. No, he wouldn't. That's what I'm saying. It's okay. Wait, what? But that is a contradiction. Well, we're taking a penalty, I guess. Because <laughs> I forgot to make save state. I thought that actually was what it was. That's weird. Maybe it's the autopsy? Ye maybe that's... Yeah, that's it. Okay. That, that, my bad. This is the victim's autopsy report. It clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. Strangulation? The knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. Uh, and what does this mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it. Which would mean that it was ripped off of the costume when? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly! Which means... It is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. <sighs> That's right, Miss Andrews. There is no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. 
This button was consciously pulled off of the victim's already dead body. She's got the sass on the I was about to say, she's got the sass. Order, order, what is the meaning? What is the meaning of this right? So what if the button was torn off of the body after the victim had already died? What does that change? Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We now know this button was not torn off during the fight. So the murderer took the time and effort to purposefully rip this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Mr. Wright, does this mean... Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with the button? What was it? To have a memento of the crime, to pin the crime on guard, to destroy evidence. Pin the crime! It's so obvious! Yep! <laughs> Maybe this was the criminal's first crime, and since it went so well, the person wanted something as a memento. <laughs> right. I'll give this button to you as a memento. Huh? A reminder to never set foot in another court of law as again for as long as you live. Yes, I think it would be for the best if you stayed away from the attorney's bench. Wow. But well, wait! Please, Your Honor, I I'll get it right this time. I'm sure of it. Mr. Wright, does this mean... <laughs> it was to destroy the evidence, of course. Um, to destroy the evidence. Yes, we already heard you the first time. And which blasted piece of evidence was the person trying to destroy, right? Um... Mr. Wright, if you continue like this, I'm afraid you'll only destroy yourself. S sorry <laughs> There is only one logical reason for someone doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. Ongard. There's no way anyone would put a bloody button in their own pants. No kidding. That's right, Mr. Ongard was set up. By the real killer, of course. She's like, whatever. <laughs> And the real murder is... Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer, then? Finally. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet. Not until the very end. The real killer, the person who planned to frame Mr. Ongard, is... Well, one of two people. Wait, you have two different people in mind. Well, I mean, it's probably... Andrews, but it could be, um, Matt. Or not Matt, um, Juan. Juan killed himself? No. Okay, fine. <laughs> Let's try that! Let's see if we get special dialogue for that. Right. Which of these four doesn't belong here? Up, down, left, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, right? Thank you. I feel much better. I'm relieved to know you can at least pick that much out. I worry about you. You seem to fail every time you try to make logical sense. Or in other words, think before you speak, Phoenix. <laughs> he early, earlier said, my strategy, speak first, think later. <laughs> is it just me or is everyone gaining up on me? That's enough dawdling now, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Y yes, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews, I choose you! You are Mr. Coroner's killer! That, I thought that was going differently. What? what? Glasses broken, too. <laughs> order! 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 Mr. Wright! This is a very grave matter. Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews. W how preposterous! You can't stick any of that on me! I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then... then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. Ongard, naturally. A knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you. <sighs> the glass is broken free. Th then... what? What about the button that was found in Matt Sakama? This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were the person who found his body or the killer. 
However, if Mr. On Guard was the real killer, there is no way he would have put such incriminating evidence in his own Hakama. Glass is broken four. She's a lot of spare pairs of glasses <laughs> That's her in her fifth pants. spare pair. Her fourth spare pair, her fifth pair. <laughs> the only person who could have put this button into Mr. Ongard's Akama is the person who went to wake him up from his nap, which is you yet again, Miss Andrews. Uh, I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. That costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was just such a costume inside the guitar case? It could only have been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is you, Miss Adrian Andrews. No, no, I... Yeah, that's that's the sprite I'd say it has the most emotion in it. Yeah, that is a lot, to be honest. But Miss Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the guitar case. And it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. Th that's right. That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposefully left her fingerprints on the glass to show that, yes, indeed, she was the classic day's discoverer of a dead body. <sighs> Five pairs broken. And to top it all off, there is this photo. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on Earth can believe this nickel samurai's Mr. Ongar. To be fair, that is a hard picture to figure out. That <laughs> so is a hard don't, don't say that, Miss Phoenix. <laughs> he would be much too short for his own costume if it was him. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you're also kind of short in stature, are you not? Please stop. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? Um. I've got her this time. Miss Andrews? I. I. I refuse to testify. What was that? There's a law. It says I can't be forced to testify about something if it can incriminate me. Well, yes. You are absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self-incrimination. By allowing a witness to not testify if the testimony can cause damage to themselves. WHAT?! Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. Actually... Thinking back to yesterday in Mr. Ongard's room... Adrian Andrews! Y yes Think hard about what we just discussed, understood? Alright. I, th I never thought I'd get to hear her again, which is good. That's it. That's when Francesca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Anderson to not testify if things looked bad. You did a good job pr proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. But there's still one thing you haven't done. Something I haven't done? <laughs> What's wrong, right? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence? What is so humorous, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sure you realize this as well, Your Honor. But... Everything the good lawyer here has proven up to this point is meaningless. Wh what? Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? I've also poked all the holes in your evidence to make it so it's circumstantial as well. So. <laughs> yes, circumstantial. You have yet to provide a single piece of definitive proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbor a wish to murder Mr. Corrida. That is true! We haven't shown any suicide note-related things yet, which is what made me think we're nowhere near done yet. Yep. Miss- Miss Andrews! You- did you want to kill Mr. Corrida? I believe this may lead to me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There's nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of due to my silence. No! She's taking that defiant attitude again. But Mia, what should we do? 
Somehow, we've landed in the worst possible situation. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this no. point in time. Maya! Maya! Miss Adrian Andrews has refused to testify, and the defense's theory that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid definitive proof. But that's not true! In this situation, there's only one thing this court can do, and that is to declare a recess. Re recess? I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter, and at tomorrow's trial... T tomorrow We don't have a tomorrow! If we don't get the not guilty verdict today, then... Please wait, your honor! The that's not necessary! The trial! Please continue the trial! What are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That... That's not it! This isn't about that! Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is! Please, let the trial continue! If I don't get the verdict, then Maya... I'm surprised he didn't mention this earlier! <laughs> like, hey listen, if we do not do this today, there is another wife who will be dead. Or worse. <laughs> so... But it's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. We'll make her actually speak up! That's such a stupid rule! It's it the Fifth Amendment! But okay, if that were the case, I think five other cases of this would be like, I don't want to talk. Nyeh, 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 nyeh. And then like... But here's the thing, by not talking, she's looking ridiculously suspicious right now. Right. And she's gonna get arrested for this. Right. Because she's now a big suspect. Now then, this court is... Thank you, Edgeworth. It is not impossible for this trial to continue. Mr. Edgeworth, w what are you... It's true Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination. However, if the topic of conversation was something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold testimony. Y yes, that is very true, but... Actually, there is one little thing that I'm curious about. Miss Andrews? When you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes, and? I can't help but think how unnatural that is. Usually, when one finds a body, they are shaken up, not stirring a glass of juice. So my actions were unusual, but I've already... Before you speak, I want to state that if you have a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again as to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. That's true. Hmm. I don't know what it is about Edgeworth today, but I can't get a good read off of him. Is he friend or foe? I just don't know.